What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at another Lead Code SQL interview question. This one's part of SQL 50. Let's get into it. Now this one's called customer who visited but did not make any transactions. It's marked as easy, but it is pretty tricky. It's part of SQL 50 and it's in the basic joints section. So we're going to have to look out for that. Think about joints when we're attacking this problem. It has two tables for us to work with, one called visits, which has a visit ID and a customer ID and one called transactions, which has a transaction ID, visit ID and amount of the transaction. Our task is to write a solution to find the IDs of the users who visited without making any transactions and the number of times they made these types of visits. So how many times did they visit a store maybe, but did not make any transactions, did not buy anything. Return the result table sorted in any order and the result format is in this example, which for this example input would be customer ID 54, 30 and 96, 54 having two visits without transactions and 30 and 96 having one visit without transactions. Now let's check the data here. We have visits, but yeah, they don't really span the, oh yeah, they do. So we have customer ID 54 here with two visits but that visit doesn't show up with a transaction associated with it. So yeah, if there's a visit without a transaction, it's gonna show up in the visits table, but not in the transactions table. So that's what we're gonna work with. I think we should get started by thinking about the output. So we want to have the customer ID in there, and then we want to have a count, some sort of count, and that's going to be count uh, called count no trans for count of visits without transactions, no transactions. Selecting that from, yeah, visits. We want the amount of visits, but then we also want to have a, the information in transaction. So let's think about it for a while. So what do we want to count here? Really, we want to count the distinct visit IDs. I'm just using distinct here in case of any duplicates, but we might be fine without distinct actually. Do we really want to count visits? And then we need to bring in that condition of not having any transactions. So basically what we're trying to do, or what I just did with the example data, is I want to check whether that visit ID shows up in the transactions table with a transaction. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I think there's two ways of doing it. Actually, if you think about it, either we say this visit ID should show no, should not show up in transactions by saying where visit ID is not in this subquery table. So using a subquery approach, I think we to say select visit ID from transactions. And yeah, that basically scans the entire, entire transactions table, checks visits and yeah, if our visit is not in transactions, that means it has been a visit without a transaction and then we want to count it. So yeah, that pretty much would take care of that. It's gonna filter to that in our where clause. Just double check here, it almost seems too easy. We still need to count this per custom ID. So we need to supply a group by clause here as well. Without the uh, group by, it would just count the overall amount of visits and it wouldn't do that per customer ID. So we really just want to count that per customer ID and that's why we also have that in the output. It doesn't say we want any order, so let's try that right now. And yeah, that's actually accepted. I can submit that as well to see if it passes all the test cases. And um, yeah, it seems like it is accepted, which is great. 
But actually, the first solution I thought of was really a joint solution, a left joint solution in particular. So I said this in a previous video, but there's often when you use this subquery approach with checking whether something is in a list, you can also join this, uh, solve this with a left join. That's what we're going to do here. So we're also going to use the transactions table. But this time we're creating a join, joining on visit ID since that is the common field that is in both tables. We could either say visits dot visit ID equals transactions dot visit ID or we could use yeah a SQL keyword my SQL keyword that would just state it as using visit ID to say we should join using the visit ID because yeah it's called it it has the same name in both tables that's why it work in order not to complicate things I'm going to stick with the basic syntax of using the on clause and yeah that's going to create this join now we also need to have a where condition in there so what happens when we join is we're going to take the visits or the visit ids in our visits table and we're going to try to join that to visit id in transactions so for visit id 7 which is our custom id 54 which is in our output this one wouldn't have a matching entry in transactions so the join a regular join would not work it would not be part of the output for the left join we're going to keep what's in the left table we supply in this case visits is on the left side of the left join we're left joining transactions which means we're going to take fields from transactions if there is a match and if there's no match, like in this case, we're gonna supply null values for it. So it's gonna generate null values for all the fields in there. So what we want to do is we're gonna take one of the fields in transactions and say, if that is null, then that means there wasn't an entry in transactions for that visit and that means it's a visit without a transaction, which is what we're trying to find. The rest of our query is gonna work in the same way. It's just gonna select custom ID and count these visits, that visit type that doesn't have a transaction associated with it. And grouping by custom ID is gonna perform the count per customer and not for all customers together. Yeah, using distinct, we'll get rid of any duplicates if there are multiple entries in this table, but from the example data they supplied, it's probably not going to be the case, but yeah, it's just a way to make sure. So if you run this, it should be accepted as well. And yeah, for this one, since we're counting visit ID, we also need to supply which table it is from. Since well, now we have more fields that we're selecting from, after doing that join, but since it will be null for the transactions table, for the fields from the transaction table, if we left join, we're going to count based on the visit ID in visits because it's always going to be there. And that makes sure we actually include it in the count. If we took the transactions.visit ID, it might be null. But yeah, actually thinking about it. Um, yeah, that would be as planned. If there was a match, it wouldn't really matter which one we're counting. But in this case, if there's no match in transactions, we still want to count it. And actually our condition is we only want to count those that don't have a match. And that's not. So that's all correct. It's submitted and that should be accepted as well. So this solution is actually not accepted because of an edge case in the data, which is not presented in the description. So here in transactions, the amount can be null for a transaction, which might be if the item is free or it's a promotion. For whatever reason, it can be the case apparently. So instead of 
filtering on the amount in transactions being null, it's probably better to do that for transaction ID. Transactions dot transaction ID. Let's be very specific here. That being null. So yeah, that is something that's really not specified in the question, but in an interview, if that is not supplied, yeah, there's no way of you knowing that. You can ask to make sure, but this solution is going to be accepted. So that is just a specific thing about this question. But yeah, it is a good reminder to always make sure you know the data. If you can, in a real world scenario, you probably want to check if there can be null values for any of these fields, or there can be a combination of null values and, and actual values in the transactions table. Now that's going to be it for that question. That's going to wrap up this question nicely. And as you can see, you can solve this using a left join or a subquery. And I think it's good to practice both since yeah, it helps you to get a better understanding of left joins and subqueries, which might get more complicated with harder questions. But that's going to be it for me today. I'm going to go through all Lead Code SQL 50 problems on this channel. I'm going to have a playlist with all the solutions. I'm going to link it in the description and at the end of the video. If you have already exhausted the list of Lead Code database problems, I can always recommend you to check out Stratastretch, which is a platform that has only database problems, which you can solve using any SQL dialect, R or Python. You can brush up your skills in those departments as well. And I'm going to have a sponsor link in the description down below. And I have a lot of solutions for story stretch problems on this channel as well, if you haven't seen any of those yet. Apart from that, that's really going to be it. And I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.